Welcome, everybody. Thanks again for showing up and joining me. This is another week of In the Studio Live, my live streaming show where I basically show you the day in the life of a mixing or mastering engineer in the studio. So every week I bring in, a, we have a new thing that I'm doing in the studio, If it's whether it's mixing, some mixing tips or mastering, which is what we're doing tonight. Um, if you like this kind of stuff, I have a YouTube channel you should check out. It's uh, youtube.com slash Raytown Productions. I have tons of cool tutorials on there. I even have some gear reviews that I've done recently, which is kind of strange, but whatever. It was thought it was useful. So um, tonight we're doing some something a little bit different. I'm really excited about this. We are actually like smashing some genres together. We're doing uh, an emo rap song that has elements of like pop punk in there. So I'm super excited. Oh God, Anthony, here we go again. We're doing we're doing this thing, aren't we? All right. Well, if you haven't noticed, I have these crazy alerts set up, so it's going to be super fun. This live stream is interactive, as you just found out. So if you have a question about what I'm doing, ask in the chat. They'll get populated and everybody will be able to see it on the screen so we can all talk to each other and have a good time. And uh, yeah, if you do anything like like, share, follow, you get a crazy hair whipping guy that comes out of the corner. So uh, enjoy that. Um, so tonight I'm doing something special. So before we get into the beer, before we get into the session, um, I thought we would do something a little bit extra for you guys tonight. And what we're doing is we have the artist of the song with me, uh, via the internets. And, uh, yeah, so we're going to talk to it, talk to him. His name is Nick Tello. And so I'm just going to bring him on in here. Boom. Nick, welcome to the show, man. It's so good to have you. Hey, what's going on? Thanks for hey. having me. <laughs> so, so if you guys don't know Nick, um, he's been making music for about 10 years now. Uh, he's uh, been producing stuff a lot more seriously for like the last four years or so. And he writes awesome music. Um, so I just want to uh, play a little bit of the song that we're going to be mastering tonight so you guys can hear. And then we're going to kind of talk. We're actually going to like ask, pick... Nick's brain about what he did to make the song and what went uh, into everything. So check this out. This is uh, the song. What's the title of this song? I already... Keep Your Time. Keep Your Time. Keep Your Time. And So check this out. This is what we're, we're going to be mastering tonight. It's so awesome. It's going to get rippled the whole damn time, aren't we? <laughs> All right, I'm muting those alerts. You guys are too much. Sing a song to me on both my hands and lyrics. Break away, claim your space, it will be a secret. So I'll actually bring you in right into the session here. Dude, this song is awesome, Nick. I'm sorry I'm interrupting, but I just had to say something. <laughs> and I'm just going to leave it at that. But th we're going to hop into this track. I'm so excited. So, Nick, dude, the production is insane. It's so good. Like, Thanks, uh, man. <laughs> uh, tell me about it. Like... This so did you recorded everything? You have your own studio, and then you just track. You literally wrote every piece of this. Uh yeah, I wrote the song. I wrote it originally. Um, it was gonna be a collaboration between me and my friend who is an like an EDM artist slash DJ. Um, and the the intention was to write it as like a pop song, kind of for a a girl to sing. It was supposed to be sort of like an icona pop type of singer over it. And then um, that's why it's like super high in the register of like the vocal range. Yeah. So, like, um, so I demoed vocals over it and he was like, no, you should sing it. 
And so I recorded <laughs> my vocals over it and, and just like pushed my voice to its limits, essentially. Like, you know what I mean? And then um, we made the song as a collaboration. And then I decided that it, it wasn't exactly how I had envisioned the song was going to go. So it was going to be, um, so we, we decided that it was going to be his remix of the original song that's out already right now. Um, the keep your time Sandlot remix. And then I produced the song around the vocals. I, I went back after he told me to re-record the vocals. I recorded the vocals like legit, edited them over the course of like a week. Um, and then, you know, over the course of the last like year or so, I took the vocals and I produced the song around the vocals. Um, I made all the synths, I made all the samples. Um, I made all the, um, I record all the guitars myself um, with like a Kemper. <laughs> it's it's and, so uh, crazy. Yeah. In yeah. bass too, right? I hear a bass in there. Is that program? There's a bass in there. Yeah. That There's like um this like dingy ass bass that's like <laughs> with like really old strings. But like I recorded it and I was like, it already sounds like distorted and gross. And it's like kind of fine because like that's the vibe anyway. But but yeah, so so I recorded all the stuff and and the. Uh, wrote all this stuff and I actually put a lot of time into the lyrics too like the lyrics I spent a decent amount of time on um, the lyrics are awesome thanks yeah yeah no I dig it it's 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 the song is extremely well done um how many vocals are in there I mean they're they're like I can tell there's a ton of them and they're perfectly timed and tuned so like there's probably like seven layers of vocals and I can hear like maybe three or five of them so yes. I'm just curious the hook is two, like, sort of panned, like, RL20 unison vocals in the center, kind of. And then there's a low vocal that's, like, in the background, like, an octave down. And then there's a left harmony and then there's a right harmony. So it's, like, five in total. Mm -hmm. But obviously there's, like, you know, pure play reverb, short verb, um, slap back delay. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? All like, the sauce. Chorus. Dimension D is on there, and then you know, there's probably also the and then there's like regular delay, you know, with a filter on it, so that's why it sounds like huge. Um, yeah, and then the let me, let me like can I hop into the chorus? I just want to hear it, I just want to yeah, hear yeah. everybody. Is this the, is this the chorus or is this pre chorus? That's the chorus, yeah, yeah. Yeah, man, it's super well done. Um, so we actually have a question from Anthony Cachera. He's asking, what do you use to make the synths? Oh, yeah. Um, synths are mostly serum. Mm. I, I um, basically, like, I take presets and I modify them and make them better. Like, you know, there's a few that are, like, you know, um, modeled after, like, dead mouse type sounds and, like, you know... Um, marshmallow bass i looked up like a marshmallow bass tutorial and then like i take those sounds and then i like modify them and make them better and i i um over the like i listen to a lot of edm so like over the years i pick out sounds that i like in songs and then i try to like match them and then i like <laughs> better you know what i mean that's like, good man it like take stuff from different genres and then bring them into your you know your genre you know that's that's yeah. where really creative cool stuff happens like that's you know like this song um yeah, no, this is really cool, man. Um, and then, so yeah, I, I'm sorry, I cut you off earlier. You were talking about the verses. So how how did you go about like the verses? Yeah, so the verses are basically just a low vocal, a high vocal, and then a harmony. Um, and then the harmony kind of like switches pans from left to right or whatever. And uh, it's it's basically like the same thing it's just like mad effects and then like i did like a heavy distorted auto tune type sound in the second verse and then all that is is um is like an a uad a800 plug in it's like a tape thing but mm -hmm. it's like driven so that it's distorted and then just auto tune so auto tune plus distortion is like i had to like do that yeah once. i mean i'm waiting like, for people to auto tune guitars and have that be a thing <laughs> well you can and I, oh i know oh i know <laughs> <laughs> yeah. i auto tune bass i don't but i don't tell anybody i do that but that's a secret you gotta do it so. <laughs> yeah dude awesome um 
Yeah, no, this is really cool. Are you, do you produce everything in Pro Tools? What are you using for this? Are you an uh, uh, Ableton Cubase. kind of person? It's Cubase. All in Cubase? Hell yeah. Um, yeah. All right, so, yeah. so yeah, my session will look familiar to you. Except maybe yeah. I'm like five versions behind. I need to upgrade to the latest version, but I'm cheap. Oh, I just upgraded so. like today. <laughs> yeah, I, I, like, I got a new computer, so I upgraded my Cubase. Um, I love Cubase. Like my friend who taught me how to produce basically like turned me on to it. Yeah. And um, I don't really see a reason to switch to be, I mean, like it, it has bugs, like for sure there's bugs, but like <laughs> the workflow is great. So, you know, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, listen, Nick, thank you so much for popping on here and telling us about your song. Um, can you tell people where they can like check out your music? Um, you know, things about you, where you're producing, uh, if they want to get in con uh, contact with you to like work together, collaborate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, my socials are all Nick Tell Music. So N I C K T E L L O, and then music on Instagram. Um, I make TikToks. That's um sort of like what I'm more known for these days. Um, and then Twitter is is the same thing. My Facebook page is also just Nick Tell Music. Um, I have a recording studio that's called Title Town Sounds, and I produce like and mix um that's sort of like my main gig right now so like titletownsounds.com if you want to work together and then contact so um that's the best way and um i'm you know open to to like you know talk to artists and see if um you know if i can help them out with anything so yeah awesome man yeah well everybody uh drop a one in the chat to thank nick for coming on and um, we're going to get moving on to the next segment of the show. But, dude, Nick, thank you so much. Really appreciate it. Yeah, man. Thanks. I appreciate the opportunity. Yeah, definitely. All right. I'll see you, man. All right. All right. We're back. Back back to the, uh, the old live stream. I hope you guys like that. If you did, uh, I'm definitely going to be doing more of this. You know, where we can have a little bit of interview with this artist and the producers of tracks. Kind of pick their brain a little bit. Uh, and, and I think it's helpful for everybody. Ah, Johnny. <laughs> I think it's helpful for everybody because, uh, you know, we're all learning together. Uh, you know, you can, you can, someone might have a cool trick that they use that nobody knows about and then they can start using it in their sessions. So without further ado, though, we're moving on to the next segment, which everybody I'm sure has been waiting for, which is the, the, uh, craft brew section. And tonight we have, again, yet another DC Brow Beer. My buddy actually uh, partially or co-owns DC Brow Brewing, so I support the hell out of it. This, these guys work so hard, and they do a lot of cool stuff for the community. Tonight it's a, we have a porter. It's called the Pen Quarter Porter, um, and this is my Wisconsin uh, koozie or uh, whatever. I screwed it up every single time, but uh, this porter is awesome. If I had to rate it, I'd give it a, a 4.25 out of 5. It's hard to, hard to break that 4.5 for me, you know what I mean? I'm kind of a snob. So, all right. With that, though, let's get moving. So we got some people saying some stuff. Um, so Kyle says, what's up? What's up, Kyle? Good to see you, man. Um... People want to go join Cubase, and let's keep moving. All right, coaster. Pete said that's a coaster. My bad. My bad, bro. <laughs> Four curds out of five. That's right. All right, let's hop into the session. I'm just going to keep enjoying this lovely beer, uh, and then uh, we'll uh, master this track, dude. I'm so excited. It's super catchy. All right, let's hop into this. Okay. Oh, Voodoo Ranger is an excellent choice. All right, so if, if, you, um, if you've seen my show before, something I like to do anytime I'm about to master a song is I just want to listen to the track, get an idea for the vibe of it, and see if there's anything that's distracting or that needs to be um, brought, uh, tucked away or brought out to, to maximize that, the feeling of the track. This song is super like poppy to me, um, so we want to definitely 
think about that as we're mastering this. So pop music tends to be a little bit brighter, a little bit more bass driven, very rhythmic. And we want need to make sure it's like crystal clear and those vocals stay on top. Okay, so let's just let's hop into like the loudest part of the song, which is probably one of these last choruses, get a feeling for how the song is, then we'll start mastering. So I think we can make it wider. Cool. Okay. All right. I know. I know what I want to do. Uh, let's throw. Actually, let's let's check. Let's check to make sure there's no weird um, subharmonic stuff going on. Uh, so my tool of choice. Let's pull up Fab Filter. Um, I don't hear anything, but that doesn't necessarily mean that there's not something rumbling down in like below 40 hertz. No, it's really tight. Cool. Yeah, Nick even played acoustic guitar on this track. That's wild. Yeah, I'm not even going to mess with this right now. We don't need to do anything to this. Uh, Nick did a really good job managing the low end, so let's, let's just skip that for right now. Um, let's, I want to add a little bit of air to it. And I, you guys know where I'm going with this. I use this this trick all the time. Uh, we're gonna use the pull tech. Um, always super broad and way, way, way up top. And we're gonna go way over the top with it. Just listen for it to open up a little bit and then dial it all the way back and then glue everything together. Okay, so let's get to that loud part. So we're starting to get sibling here. So the vocals are very, yeah, they're very poppy the way they're mixed. So we gotta we gotta really pay attention because they're the the sibilance is starting to jump out from from us boosting this way way up top. So we're gonna have to just be a little bit more careful. Um, so I'll keep my heart, you keep your time. And I never ask for forever, but hey. Dude, you guys just need to get with it and join the Cubase train. Ryan, I don't even, what do you, oh, you're a Pro Tools guy, aren't you? Alright, so check this out. I'm going to bypass this. Listen how much the mix kind of folds in when we get rid of this. Like, it's wild, right? I mean, that's, that's, that's all the track needed was a little bit of that high-end boost right there. Um, before I get ahead of myself, let's, let's try to build a little bit more groove into this track, too. So it's dominated by these 808s, which is a cool thing, but I think we want to... We can use that to maybe add a little bit of movement to this song. So let's, let's see what we can do in terms of using a compressor to kind of dial that in. So, anytime we're dialing in a compressor for mastering, um, there's a few things you want to think about. So, for example, if you want it to be punchy or if you want it to have sustain, okay? So, right now, I feel like it's a pretty good balance of both. I think it could actually use a little more sustain than punch. So... The way that we can dial that in in mastering is with the attack. So if we want it more punchy, you do a little bit slower attack. If you want it to be more um, sustained or, or give it some length, uh, you make the attack a little bit lower or tighter. And, and at that point, then we can just play with the release, and then that basically dials in the movement or the response of the song to that kick drum. Okay, so let's, uh, let's just start... Bring in a little bit of this and gluing this mix together and adding a little bit of length to it. So it can be really hard sometimes to hear what the compressor is doing. So what I always recommend is 
bite into it really hard. Like turn, get the ratio cranked up and then really dig in with the threshold so that you can, you really are doing a lot of gain reduction um, and then put your release really fast. Then we'll be able to exactly hear what we're doing to transients with the attack. So you can hear it really pumping, right? And let's make that knee hard. Because then, there we go. So when we have the attack really short like this, like 10 milliseconds or 6 milliseconds, we're losing all the transient on the kick. And it's just kind of like making the song boring. But when we get up here, you know, right around like 80 milliseconds, something like this. Now that that kick drum's punching through and it's starting to have a groove to it. So let's let's actually really dial in the groove of the song using this release knob now so that when the as the gain is swelling back up, it makes the song kind of bounce with the kick drum, okay? And this is a little bit faster up-tempo song, so it's gonna be a little bit, uh, we're gonna have to go a little faster. Yeah, I'm actually thinking we need to go really fast, like 50 milliseconds. All right, and then let's get this back to normal. We had it like at four to one. It's got to go way less. Now that we kind of have the movement figured out. Beer cam. Cool. This is starting to feel pretty good. I just want to soften the knee a little bit. It just seems like when that kick goes, it's too... The, the gain reduction is too quick. I want it to be a little bit softer around where we have the threshold set. So I'm just going to like soften this up. There's that awesome distorted auto tune, Nick. <laughs> awesome. All right, I think that's good, man. It feels right to me. See, okay, so Nick, you're going to make this really boring for me because you did a really good job mixing this, and I don't need to do, like, any heavy lifting. Honestly, like... Oh man, the the only last I have a few last things, and I think we can maybe make the the mix sounds a little bit narrow to me. So we have a few ways of approaching that. One way is we can do my center trick using wave center. I love 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 that. Another thing, let's try let's try something a little different tonight. But before I do that, we need to save this uh, song one because I already forgot the title again. All right, so let's try something a little different. Nick, dude, I just, my brain is just in its own thing, man. Like, I just suck. <laughs> um, so I've discovered this thing. Is this at stereo width? Maybe it's like air or something. Let's try this one. I think this is it. This is it. Okay. This plug-in... I don't even know how I got it. Like, I, I don't remember buying this. It must have came bundled with something. But this thing's kind of cool. Um, they have, like, the width broken down into three knobs. So you have, uh, um, you have high frequencies, mid, and low. So if we want... What's nice sometimes is usually things on the side, usually, um, in my experience, and the way I produce music, is usually brighter. So... Um, so if you boost the highs here, like on the, on the, in this plugin, it just really adds this nice width to everything. 
and then we can mo like mono the the low mids and the the bass frequencies here. So and then they have three different modes of making things sound wide. So some of them are not really compatible with um, with mono. So like this comb filtering thing or phase. I I tend to try to stay away from that kind of stuff, but. This adjustment knob is kind of cool. So let, let me just sh show you what, what this sounds like. So mono, there's some extra width. And then if we dial in a little bit of highs on here, you can hear how like now the hi-hats are starting to get a texture to them, right? There's uh the there's like a, it's almost like, you know, um yeah, just, I don't know how to describe it better than that, texture. But like, that's something that I think is really important in music that a lot of people don't really talk about is it's more than just a song. It's more than just the compression. Um, you know, when you're when you're writing songs and in, in you're in the songwriting process, it's more than just frequencies. It's more than dynamics. Like there's like textures of things and. If everything is soft and smooth sounding, like it feels like you're missing something. It's kind of like if you go out to dinner and you're eating, all you eat is like sweets, like you want something salty. It just feels unbalanced. And I think by adding like these, this high frequency to the sides, it kind of, it brings out more of the, the texture of everything. And so now we have like, like the low end is very smooth, and then we have these nice textures around. I mean, it probably sounds like I'm a crazy person saying these things, but I mean, it's to me, I'm very big on visualizing the song, and I'm very big on texture and if you, in finding the right balance and contrast for everything. So, you know, if this part is really textured, maybe this build should be kind of smooth sounding, so it lose the hi hats, which we we have, right? And then it comes back in and you probably have, you know, those elements that are textured again or have sharp transients. Like things like that, I think, really make a song extremely interesting. And, uh, yeah, and it, I, it's these kind of things that make me listen to music over and over and over and over again. So, um, Anthony's talking trash as usual. He always does. Um, yeah. PSA, save your session. I actually have a video of my session crashing um, after I spent like an hour working on on it for a, a, a talk that I had to give. And I happened to record my facial expression when my computer crashed. And it's pretty hilarious. So if you, <laughs> you want to see that video, go check out my YouTube channel. Um, it's like two videos old or something. It'll take 30 seconds of your life, but I think you'll get a laugh out of it. And it'll remind you never, ever, ever, ever to not save your session like every one minute. You should be like obsessing over saving your session. All right. Let's add some texture, baby. So this mid is bringing out the, the body of the guitars, which I don't think we necessarily want. I'm not going to mess with this. All I wanted was just a little bit of that transient uptick. Man, you guys in your Rick roll. <laughs> oh man, I I slacked there. I should have done the beer cam for that one. My bad. Uh, okay. So let's listen. It, I mean, man, we're already getting close to sounding awesome. Let's do, there's a few things I want to do, and I'm going to put these plugins on so I don't forget, because I'm going to get distracted, I'm going to start talking to you guys, and then forget what I'm doing. So we're going to do, I'm going to, I'm going to teach you how to glue down the low end of like a pop song using the Pro MB. Um, we need to do, we need to add some sort of saturation, saturation? using uh, inflator to give it some volume. And that's going to help make these quieter parts pop a little bit. Um, something else we can do is just volume automate this up. So if that inflator thing kind of makes, if it, if it compresses or saturates it too much, we'll get rid of that. And then we'll do some volume automation because I want to preserve these, these little like, micro 
you know, dynamics that we have here. If I just throw a big compressor on and just clamp down on everything, we lose the natural vibe of, of these elements. So I don't want to necessarily do that. Uh, yeah, you did. You did rickroll me. Uh, but it's all good. I forgive you, man. How do you say your name? Is it Galsa? Galsa07? I forgive you, my friend. You can rickroll me all you want. And then, so we have, let's see, so we're going to glue on the low end. We're going to bring that out. And here's something I also like to do is a little bit of tape saturation. Okay. Um, and I just always use this Kramer tape thing. Um, it just sounds good. And I'll show you what it does. It actually does a bunch of things under the hood. It's not just like saturation. It also has like this weird low, like low bass bump thing in the low mids. I don't know. It just, it helps to make things sound awesome uh so we'll dial that in and then at that point we basically would just use a limiter and, and finish this track off so let's let me show you let me show you some cool things with pro mb all right so we're going to glue down this low end all right so what I like to do is just make a band that covers the bass and we're going to solo this and find where the kick is and find where like the bass line is. Okay, so right here, this is like almost just kick and then let's find just the bass. Actually, more like here. All right. So it's probably extremely hard for you guys to hear that. But basically, we're just finding where the different spots that the kick and bass live. And then we can then, you know, really dial this in the way we want it to be. Okay. So something I like to do, and this, we'll, we'll see how this is gonna, all going to play out. But you can boost the low band pretty aggressively, but then also attenuate it aggressively okay so what what's happening is it's it's making the bass consistent and then when it hits um it'll it'll raise up the volume so then we have this nice like consistent bass uh that just is always present so you get a very full bass sound without it sounding without like lopping off the the transient and we can do that by adjusting the attack time. And then again, the release will help us dial in how long we want that bass to be hitting for. Cool. So this is just kind of gluing it, gluing it down. All right, this gets us a place a lot of bass. Yeah, you can see. So, like, when these 808s come in, um, the bass will be full. But because we have a slow attack, uh, it allows the punch of the kick to come through. I need passion, you need All right. I need to go see what my dog is doing. This is ridiculous. But I'm going to cheers you guys. And I'll be back in 15 seconds because my dog is, like, losing her mind downstairs. You got to take care of the fam first. Stay put. Here, I'll play it. I'll play the song. So it's like you got some wait waiting room music. All right, we're back, and we got dogs. It was, uh, here, maybe I can show you. Where are they? Where are the dogs? They already left me. They already left. It was, uh, 
it was um car it was Maya barking and then Karma was eating things that she shouldn't be eating. So it was basically one of my dogs was tattling on the other one. Classic dog dad life, you know what I mean? <laughs> All right, back to gluing this in. So this is huge, this, this low band right here, when you are, for like, if you have a kick drum and you have 808s, um, because this will kind of keep everything under control without it getting crazy, and it'll also make sure that your kick drum stay punchy. Uh, it's maybe a little bit too, how do I want to say this? I think there's a little bit too much movement in that low end, so I want to tighten it up a little bit more. I want the kick drum to punch, but I don't want like the bass to swell up from the 808. I want it just to kind of be there a little bit sooner. It's sounding better. Cool. That's sounding good. All right, now let's check out this, the actual bass line here. Um, and the snare might live here, so we... No, the kick drum actually lives here, too. Hmm. This might be a little bit trickier than I was expecting. So let's try to... Let's bypass this one. Um, I might regret this, but let's get rid of that. And then let's just extend this out a little bit. So there's still a little bit of this movement thing that I'm not digging, and I wonder if I'm starting to... Okay, so I have a limiter on here, just make sure I'm not clipping when I send the audio to you guys. But sometimes I go too crazy and then I uh, end up pushing it into the limiter. Alright, we're just a little too aggressive. I'm just going to take this ratio and dial it back. But I think this is like the right kind of... Uh, we're, we're starting to glue the kick and bass together so that um, it's, like I said, still punchy but full. Good. Awesome. I dig it. So can you guys hear, can you guys hear what that's doing? I know it's like, it's really hard for sometimes for, for people to hear like the sub frequency stuff. Uh, let me know in the chat. Also, if you guys are, if you guys are new to this, um, let me know where you guys are from. Um, there's, I have people popping in and out all the time. And I'm just really curious to see like who's tuning in and, uh, and if you make music yourself, if you mix music or whatever, let me know. Let's, let's uh, get some volume, baby. Nick, this is my secret weapon, dude. I'm, I'm going to show you this right here. This Oxford inflator. It is magical when it comes to adding volume. And it does it without it sounding like super compressed. But it can get distorted really quickly. So I'm going to show you guys some tricks. Cheers. Anthony, you probably should uh, do something with your life, man. Oh, sweet, dude. From Chile. That's awesome. Welcome. I hope you're getting something out of this. We do it every week, so you got to come back next week. I'm, you're a boss and you want to make it, but you're lost and you... All right, so here is... Inflator. So this is just a, I guess essentially it's a saturation plugin, but they don't the the company won't tell you what is going on because I don't know because it's it's kind of cool and I I can't figure out out exactly what it's doing, but it just works. You're a boss and you wanna make so this so okay. So there's a few things I really like about this. One, um, I like the fact that we it's a clipper, 
Okay, so that's like it offers very, very. Um, it allows you to maintain transience without sounding soft. So something like like this music, I think a clipper is gonna be a good choice to kind of lop off the very, very tops of those transients that are coming through. And then it'll allow them to stay kind of punchy and aggressive because the song has like this aggressive vibe to it that I want to maintain. Um, so it basically will, will act as a clipper here. And then also there's this effect knob, which I guess is like some sort of saturation effect. And then curve is again, something with the saturation. I don't know, but it's cool. This band split is super helpful if you are making music that has a lot of low frequency content. So it basically turns us from maybe a few bands into like several bands, I'm guessing, or a single band. So it'll keep the low end from distorting when we're when we're really driving this up for volume. All right, so let me show you how to set this up. So the way the manual says to do it, which I think is nuts, like they tell you to turn it to 100 which I think is probably overdoing it, but whatever. And then they want you to turn this curve all the way down. Then they tell you to push this gain up until you start seeing it clip a little bit, and then we clip the top off. Now, because it's already loud, loud as hell, like I gotta turn this down, you, they tell you to ride the curve up until it sounds cool. They don't really say that, but that's, what I, that's how I interpret the manual. I think I think this is close. Let's hear how if it still feels punchy. Oh yeah. Boom! I love it. What is up, Donnie? We got Donnie, Jan Pierre. Awesome. These are these are new names. I thank you guys so much for tuning in. This is super fun. So check this out. I'll bypass, let me bypass this plugin and you'll be like, where is all the coolness? Where did it all go? Yeah, so if I actually put it to like normal volume without turning it down, listen how much volume we've added. It's crazy. It's so loud. Without it. But you see, it still has the transients. You know what I mean? It's like, it's still punchy. It doesn't sound like we just compressed everything. Man, it's sounding good. Something I always like to do just as like a safety is uh, I'm going to dial this effect back a tiny bit. No, the timing was never perfect. I just feel like it's we're, we're a little aggressive with it, man. But was trying for better work. Donnie, it's been a while. Thanks for uh, giving me a second chance. It means a lot, man. It means a lot. Cheers to you, man. We got beer cam now. <laughs> Damn, Brazil. That's awesome. Is it is it Jan Pierre? I hope I said that right. I'm so, I am so bad at pronouncing names. Like, I, I feel like I should go back to like sixth grade and have to take English again because I, yeah. What kind of music do you write, Jan Pierre? I'm curious. Are, do, you, do you just write music? Are you a musician? Do you um, mix? Like, what, what, give me your backstory, man. Man, it's sounding good, guys. Um, we might not need this. Let's put it on just to see. I just like to tap the needle a little bit with this. I don't like to do anything too heavy-handed with it. But it usually adds a really cool flair and vibe to it. And let's get rid of Let's make it... 
let's make it normal. The, this bias knob will add some like crunchy, distor- like tape sounding saturation. And I pref- if we're just trying to smooth it out a little bit, then I tend to go with the normal setting. If I'm using this a little bit heavier to kind of cut off some of the transients, sometimes I like to use the, the over on the bias. So let's go to another heavy part so I can make sure that I'm just barely touching it. So something else to be aware of, this flux knob can go from making your music sound nice and clean to sounding awful really fast. So check this out. Um, I This is even kind of high for me. Right, listen how crunchy it gets. Like nobody wants that. So this is kind of, this is that saturation, okay? So, so I tend to pull it down a little bit from like the standard level. And then I just want to see these needles just barely move. Um, we don't want to, we don't want to overdo it. And actually, I think we're already overdoing it because, uh, check this out. Um, <laughs> the input is, it's, it's leaving this at like a billion, like, I don't even know how, how much over we are. We got, we got to be more responsible with our gain staging here. Oh my God. Whatever. It's okay. This, this meter is rated at minus 18 DB. So it's a little bit misleading. Um, but whatever. Okay, awesome. I want to I want to rant about this for a second. Uh, yeah. Sorry, I got distracted from Voice of the Soul Studio. That flux knob will f you up, man. Like, be careful of that it'll sneak in and then ruin your life. But I want to rant about something. This ending, this is an amazing producer choice by a decision, I guess, by Nick, because we're going back to the texture thing, okay? The acoustic guitar, the way it's played, adds this awesome texture to the end of the song as we're getting away from like this um, very textured hi-hat thing going on here. This, okay? There's a lot of that ticking sound, and then we go to... It's kind of like he's like easing you down into the next track by changing it to this, like the finger style acoustic. It's awesome. I love that. It's well done, man. I, I dig it. Um, so Galsa asks, do I check music of followers? I actually do. Um, I just started this thing. So if you go to, if you're on, hopefully you're on Facebook. If not, send me a private message on Twitch and I'll, I'll send you the information. But I have um, a group on Facebook called the Home Studio Fast Track. So if you type that in, you'll be able to find it. Um, and if you join that group, I just made a post with a link to a website where you can go and submit your own song and once a month, I'm going to choose some, one of the group members and I'm going to load the song into a session. I'm going to give it a mix critique so, or a song critique or a writing critique or anything. Uh, you just tell me what you want me to check out. If you want me to see if, you know, how, how did you do mixing it, I'll do that for you. Um, but yeah, it's a, we're going to just have a monthly contest and it's totally free. Just submit your song. I ask, I think, for you to share or invite some friends to join the group as well. Um, you don't have to, it's a, a courtesy, I guess, but that'll be a, a, a nice way for you to get your music out there in front of a bunch of people. And, um, I can give you some awesome advice, the, at least the best advice I can give. And there will be live events that you can rewatch. So other group members can hop in and, and give suggestions. It's a cool thing. I'm really excited that we just launched that. So definitely check that out. I think you'll dig it. Um, again, the group on Facebook is called Home Studio Fast Track. Here, I'll actually, I'll even type it in there for you. Facebook.com groups home studio fast track. And I probably have to put a HTTPS or no one will be able to click that. There you go. Check that out. Join. Um, 
Yeah, it'd be definitely really cool. So, all right, let's keep let's keep rolling, dude. We're we're like closing in on the end. What, Nick, you're here. Is this a serum thing that you're doing? It's like the whistle that, that, that do, 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 do. Like, what is that? I want to know what that is. I love it. Control S to save your session. Don't forget it. Oh, I like the percussion there too, man. Cool, let's set this limiter. All right, I just, if you haven't seen it and you want to know how to set a limiter, I just released a video on this. It's on my YouTube channel. Check it out. But there's a secret with FabFilter Pro L, and if you hold the Alt the alt key and then you push this up check out what's going on down here the gain offsets itself so that you can hear what the limiter is doing objectively you don't you're not being fooled by the louder volume it's so 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 important because you it's it's so easy to trick ourselves into thinking it sounds better just because it's louder but um we can't necessarily hear what it's doing to the transients we don't hear how it's impacting the the song so so check this out let's go to a loud part and if you hold this this key and you do this gain compensation trick you'll really be able to hear how it's where it starts getting crunchy and breaking up and then you know that that's too far and then once you have an idea of how that sounds you can change these different styles and see which one gives the song the right vibe, okay? So I'm holding alt. So you can hear the kick drum. When the kick's hitting, we're starting to it's starting to sound flubby and it's starting to kind of grind up. Okay, so I think this is a good spot. Let's, let's shoot out some of these different styles and see if, if one sounds better to us than, than the other. Okay, so let me just uh, a loop a section here. Here's Punchy. So the Punchy one, we lose all of that distortion, but it sounds a little bit quieter. Transparent definitely sounds transparent, but it's adding in a lot of uh, distortion. I think that's just because of the attack and release. I think trans anytime you want a transparent limiter, you basically want a really, really short attack and a really, really short release. Okay, so what it's doing is it only jumps in and turns things down and gets out of the way once it crosses that threshold. So it's really quick, okay? But because of that, it it can... It can distort really easily, okay? So, so yeah, I don't know. We, we just got to jump through these and, and find one that vibes with the song. I would be cautious of all around. Anything that's all around good is probably not amazing at any one thing, if you know what I mean. Nick and I actually just had a conversation about this. Anthony, so okay, something else I talked about is uh, turning off the visuals. So I'll, 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 I'll acknowledge you, man. <laughs> but you can turn all this crap off so that you're only using your ears, which is honestly it's probably the best way to do it. Let's see what dynamic sounds like. So what's cool is that you can hear how each, like when you really push this up and it compensates for the gain, you really hear all the different flavors of these styles 
Whereas if you just did it without compensating the gate, you'd have no idea what it sounds like. And honestly, I think punchy is probably, it's either punchy or dynamic, I think. Honestly, I'm kind of digging how this sounds. Let me just um, find a good spot and then we'll set it and we'll see what, uh, what kind of damage I'm doing here. So I'm a huge believer in make it loud as hell, but make sure it still sounds good loud as hell. Um, it just will always sound better. <laughs> People, the, the whole gain penalty thing, it, I don't know. Maybe, maybe I'm just naive and I don't really get it, but I can tell you that my favorite songs that I listen to are mastered way louder than I probably could ever master them. And they still sound awesome on Spotify. They still sound awesome on iTunes and YouTube. So I try to ignore it. Um, I just try to make it sound as good as it possibly can sound. And I think that's pretty safe advice for right now. Um, that is if you guys are curious about that whole loudness war thing that people talk about and have been talking about for like 10 years. Um, all right, let's see how, let's see what I did. Let's see what the limiter looks like when I turn the levels back on. I hope it's actually like taking some gain away. Otherwise, that was a waste you of my time. Gotta face it, hanging, ready to fight. So, man, it's really aggressive. Um, but guess what? It sounds pretty cool. So, oh well. <laughs> Something I do want to try. So this is a cool tip. Um, I haven't talked about this before. So this is actually something new. If you find, like if you go through this whole process and you find your limiter is like doing a lot of heavy lifting after you turn those meters back on, something you can try to do to see if it might help a little bit is put a clipper right before your limiter. Um, and I just put a little clipper in before it, like this guy, a little clipper. But basically what's going to happen is it's going to help chop off those crazy big transients that we have from the kicks. It should keep it sounding punchy, um, but it's going to make the limiter work less. So we might be actually, actually able to get a little bit more volume out of it without it sounding distorted or clipped or too processed. It's kind of cool. So watch what happens. When I, when I bring this down, it's going to start clipping at a lower and lower uh, volume. And you'll see that we're going to be doing less and less gain reduction here. And I should change it so you can see what I'm talking about. Okay, so here's my little clipper. I'm just going to dial this back. Keep an eye on the transients here. See, here they are. Right there, you can see clippers top chopping this off. And I bet you probably noticed it didn't sound that bad. So let, let's see if we can get a little bit more volume out of this now. We can get like a half dB out of that, I think. So um, let's go and let's, I, I'm curious what the loudness is. I haven't even looked. Let's see. Let's see if I'm super loud. Let's go and I'll pull that back up for you guys. Cool. I mean, that's loud, man. That's competitive. Let's see what the chorus is. Woo. But guess what? It sounds good, right? I mean... It doesn't sound bad. It doesn't sound like people talk, oh, it has to be minus 10. Like, I, I just don't agree, man, because you can get a song loud and it feels right. It feels good. So why, why does it have to conform to a minus 10 or minus 14 or whatever? 
Like, I don't know. I just ignore that crap. <laughs> I just, like I said, I've tried to make it sound good. Um, but what we can do is we can bypass this clipper and see if uh, it starts sounding bad. And if it sounds good with it in, then let's keep it and keep it loud. So some, you know, it's, I kind of wonder. Cheers to you, Karin. So, man, I'm kind of going back and forth. I don't know. Do you guys have a preference here? If the clipper's in or not? They're both pretty similar. With the clipper in, to me, it feels like we're choking the kick drum a little bit too much. Um, so I kind of, I might take it out. So I'll keep my heart, you keep your time. Let's check out the beginning and make sure nothing sounds too crazy. I know there's some beer swell or beer swells. Thanks, Karin. You're getting me all screwed up. There's some bass swells. I want to make sure that those aren't crack like cracking because of the clipper and the uh, how aggressively we are with this limiter. Sing a song to me on the lyrics. Okay, cool. Um let's let's do a before and after, shall we? Of the entire track. Let me gain match it. So that um, it's fair. Otherwise, it's not fair. Break away, claim your space, label me a secret. Cause of the chase to write me off. Cause our race is like we walk. We can't okay, so I'm just gonna make sure that it sounds about the same volume when I bypass everything. And then we're gonna listen to see which one sounds better. I think I can actually pull this down. So not only is this like substantially louder, which is a huge plus in my book, um, I think you're going to hear how much wider it sounds, how much more connected everything sounds uh, when I start bypassing this. Okay. So let's start with the original. And then I'm going to punch in what we did for mastering. Okay. And again, I, I think it's dialed into the point where it's not going to change the overall volume. It's just going to give you how we change the sculpting of the song. Okay, so this is unmastered. Mastered's coming up right here. Let's go back. Unmastered. It's just like boom, like you know the the song just wraps around your whole head. It's crazy. Um, everything's really articulated well. I feel like we can hear like the vocals sound more intimate to me. They sound like we basically took Nick and pulled him up to the front, and we had this like now we have like an entire stage that we're listening on. Right before, it kind of sounded like. As things were all kind of on top of each other, right? Unmastered. Man, I'm pumped with that. I Hopefully you guys could hear that. I didn't have the right camera going because I'm dummy. But I'm sure you heard the differences. Um, so at this point, my ears are probably toast from 
just interacting with you guys, talking about music and starting and stopping so much and, and diving into different things. So what I will probably do is call it quits on this track for tonight. And in the morning, it's always good to kind of, with fresh ears, after you've taken a, uh, a little bit of a break, you know, just listen to see if anything jumps out. If we made any mistakes, like if we can identify maybe a distorted kick drum or something, but we need some time away from the song. Otherwise, we're we're just going to get go down a, a rabbit hole and just keep making more and more mistakes. So, um, yeah. So I think I'm going to call it quits here. I might check it in my car to see to check that low end a little bit, and then I can just make some final adjustments. Send it down to Nick for him to check out, and uh, yeah, we'll see what he thinks of it because this is uh this is a really cool song. I hope you guys had an awesome time tonight. Let me know again if if uh, if you liked the interview because I definitely will do more. I think it's really fun to have people come on and share their a little bit of their story, what they what they're doing, and how they make music. Because you know they they might have something that they do unique that we can all take to our own sessions and things like that. So again, if you like this stuff, check out my YouTube channel. I have tutorials on there. Um, I do lots of like metal and hip hop, anything beat driven essentially is what I'm doing. So there's a lot of cool stuff on there, a lot of videos to dig through, but they're, they're really, really valuable, I think. And I put on a new one every single week. I think I'm going to put them all out on Wednesdays because why not, man? It's the middle of the week. We need something to get us moving to the end. So, um, so, so if you subscribe, expect a, a notification on Wednesday to, for the new video. And uh, yeah. Like I mentioned earlier, if you want your song to be on something like this, I have a Facebook group called the Home Studio Fast Track. Join that, and you will have, uh, there's a link in there that allows you to submit your song for a mix critique or a master critique or a songwriting, whatever, and we'll get you on a live stream and uh, in front of some other people, and we'll all give our opinions on how we can, you know, maybe you can make your song better. Um or tips or tricks or ideas that we have for your song. So if that sounds cool, check that out. Home Studio Fast Track on Facebook. I'm at Raytown Productions on all my socials. So hopefully I see you guys again next week on Thursday, 8 p.m. Eastern. And yeah, cheers to you guys. Beer Cam, one final one for you. Support local breweries, I guess, or something. All right. With that, have a wonderful evening. Thank you guys so much. I'll see you next week. Adios.